Hey guys, this is Jessica Gutierrez with Clean With Me Podcast. This is a podcast where I walk you through cleaning your house step by step. So let's clean together. Hi everybody. Happy Sunday. This is the episode where it's a 20 minute episode and I either do a deep cleaning and deep dive into a small area of the house. Or I do a speed cleaning episode that's 20 minutes of just a quick straightening of the house. But today, as promised, I'm going to do the decluttering episode. And we're going to talk about cleaning up a hot spot that's too hot to handle. Something that, uh, you know, we've been putting off maybe. Something that is just in dire need of being gone through. Maybe some stuff needs to be donated organized, etc. And like all of my episodes, um, get ready to clean, whatever that means to you, whatever your ritual is. Put your hair up in a bun, get your kids occupied, maybe have them help you with some littler chores or stuff like that, or maybe put them on some toys or a show or an activity of some kind, or maybe set them up with some crayons or something if you have children. And then once you're in the mode and motivated and ready to get that hot spot, whether it be a garage or a a room in your house or just a cabinet that's gone wild, mine was my children's rooms. They needed an overhaul 100%. So that's kind of what I'm going to base the episode on. And whatever whatever room that you're going to do right now, make sure it is straightened. At this time, just do a quick straightening of whatever room you're going to be decluttering in because because you don't want stuff that's in the way and just, you know, makes it's just going to be a cluttery, crazy mess if the room isn't initially clean. So we want to do the basic cleaning first whenever I'm decluttering, like uh, clothes in somebody's room. I like to just do a basic straightening of the room first. So while you're doing that, I'm going to have you hear a word from our sponsor. In these crazy times, don't make the mistake of assuming your current household cleaner kills all germs and bacteria. Go with the independently, clinically tested, organic, easy, safer surface solution. It has been tested on the actual COVID-19 pathogen. Most cleaners have not. Easy Safer Surface is a non-toxic, EPA-registered, and allergen-free, oxygenated water cleaning solution. Created by Ageless Global, this all-in-one cleaning solution is proven to kill 99.9% of germs in 2 minutes, even when you don't wipe it off with no regrowth after 24 hours. Easy Safer Surface is a versatile solution, safe to use on food, electronics, and even porous surfaces. Many even use it in their diffusers to freshen up the air. Available in various sizes from a convenient 1-ounce spray to a 1-gallon bulk bottle to sanitize your entire household. Incredibly safe and affordable, it can be purchased on the EZSaferSurface.com website. That's E as in egg, Z as in zebra, SaferSurface.com. Don't wait. Get the proven cleaning solution. And they sent me some samples themselves. It's a great natural cleaner. And if you want to buy it yourself, I will put the link in the description for my podcast. Okay, so... You guys should be done straightening the area or the room that you're going to be working in. So the next step would be to just dive right in. So when I was uh, organizing my kids' clothing, what I like to do personally is I like to just do a little bit at a time. A little bit at a time. So I took a couple drawers out of their their dresser and... And I dumped them out on a bed. I like to do this because obviously sleep people are going to be sleeping in that bed, right? So if you put them on top of the bed, it has to be done. And I don't do everything that I'm decluttering and put it in a big pile. Some people like to do this. I don't personally because I just feel like sometimes mentally it's overwhelming. And if you see this huge mountain of clothes... 
In reality, you're, you are going to organize that same amount of clothing, but if you see this big heaping pile of clothes, sometimes it'll it's a little bit frightening and discouraging. So I like to do just one at a time. I like to, you know, just one or two drawers at a time. I dump them out on a bed or a surface. And this can apply for anything, whether it be, you know, one segment of the garage or one one drawer in your kitchen or you know whatever it is you're decluttering one shelf one cabinet one um surface area uh, uh, you know whatever it is just one portion at a time put it all somewhere on a table or a bed or somewhere that you can't leave and it's out in the open and that you know you know, that you can't get, just be like, okay, I'm just going to leave this here for another day because, because if you're like, uh, you know, tired, of, if you get tired of it and you're like, oh, well, I'm just going to walk away. I'm going to do this tomorrow. Well, if it's in a back room or, you know, off in a corner somewhere and not on a bed or a table or something like that, then there's no there's no really reason that you have to do it at that moment. So then, you know, you could forget about it for days, weeks, months, and it could just sit there forever. So that's that's my reasoning on why I do that. So I just took a couple drawers at a time and I gathered them up and I put them into piles, my children's clothes of keeping, not keeping, and I grabbed some bags to... Uh, for after I put them, I put them in the piles first and then in bags. So I put them in piles on uh, size, what's being donated, what is just not fitting them or just they don't wear it ever or you don't wear it ever and it's being donated. That goes in a pile. I just put things in piles and separate them based on that. So like, okay, this is something they often wear. I'm going to put it in this pile. This is something they often wear, but it's out of season. I'm going to put it in this out of season pile. This is something that they're never going to wear again. I'm going to donate this, you know, like that. And you just do that for the, all the, Everything that was in the one to two drawers or whatever, or one portion of your house that you have tackled. And then once that's done, you bag up the stuff that's being donated and uh, put the stuff, the piled stuff that you're keeping to the side and then dump out another one to two drawers. And, you know, the cycle continues. And I find this method really works for me. This is a nap time thing or something to do when you have help because this is not something you can do with small children. If you have small children, I would not recommend doing a decluttering like this when it comes to clothing unless you have help, helpers, somebody in the other room helping you, um, a mother, a friend, you know, a partner, whatever, a spouse. If, but if you're alone, wait till a nap time, wait till the kids are asleep, wake up early in the morning, you know, something like that. Because I know my kids will, it's beyond frustrating when you, you know, sat here and you're like, yes, I'm done with two drawers. And then they mess them all up and mix them all together. And then it's back to uh, where we were from the beginning. So we don't want that. So make sure that you know, you have time set aside to do this and they're not going to be involved in this because this is going to be difficult with small children if you have small children. If not, then you're Gucci. So you continue this process until everything is in piles and everything that's being donated is in a bag and everything that you're keeping is in these separate piles based on season, size, etc. And at this point also you should have empty drawers. So you put the drawer the stuff in the drawers based on how you would prefer to organize it and make sure you make it realistic. Don't and also uh, a little tidbit 
about when you're going through the clothes, don't hold on to things or not just clothes, just whatever you're decluttering, any kind of thing you're decluttering in your hot spot. Don't hold on to things just because they are good items. You can always donate them or give them to someone that would really want it because one man's junk is another man's treasure. And there could be someone that could really use that thing, but don't hold on to something uh, just because there's nothing wrong with it per se. If your child is never wearing a piece of clothing, but there's nothing wrong with it per se, but you don't really like it that much, you probably shouldn't be holding on to it. Same thing with if something's not sentimental, like if we're not talking about clothing, if you're doing another kind of hot spot, if it's not sentimental, then you can, and you're not using it, you haven't even seen it in who knows how long, maybe it's time to let go of that thing. Just think to yourself, has this item, whether it be clothing or otherwise, been actively a part of my life? Is it is it going to be being used? Is this something that... Because I'm not just saying like if you haven't seen something in three months, it means you don't need it. Because you could have just had no idea where it was because it was just in this cluttered mess. So that's not what I'm saying at all. But if you for completely forgot that it existed... And you're never going to use it again. And you know in your heart you're never going to use it again. You need to donate that thing. Or get rid of it. For sure. And I do keep a box of uh, baby clothes. Keepsakes. But I I, tr- I did not want to get rid of anything. Trust me. I am the worst. But I narrowed it down. And I thought to myself. Do you. Are you ever going to look at these clothes again? I know they are cute. And they're a adorable but would you be more likely to go through a gigantic bin full of hundreds of baby clothes or just a few cute items like what you took your baby home in I mean that's all that's really gonna matter I struggle with this too so I'm talking to myself you don't have to keep everything you really don't you don't if if it doesn't get used if it's something that doesn't have like sentimental value and don't just say everything has sentimental value because your baby wore it one time and you just want to keep all of the baby's old clothes because that's not practical. I And if you're like me and you're thinking to yourself, I... I I might use all these clothes, you know. Yeah, my drawers are overflowing, but there's different occasions for these clothes. There's different reasons I need these clothes. Is there? Is there really? Are you ever going to wear that again? Is your child ever going to wear that again? Are they ever going to play with that toy again? Because we also did this with toys. If I haven't seen my kid play with a toy... Don't let your kids be around when you do this if you're doing this with toys. But if I haven't seen my kid play with a toy in forever, they don't like it anymore. They will like it if they see you throw it away. So do it when they're asleep in their beds. (laughs) But you know what I mean? Just um, you got to use that mentality. And then the hardest part after you go through your drawers and you perfectly organize and hang up your clothes and purge one it's like amazing because you know it's so much easier to find stuff when you declutter it's so much easier to get to stuff it's so much easier to find things whatever it is that you decluttered today and it's going to save you so much time and you're going to get, because chances are you've spent money on these beautiful clothes for yourself or your kids for, you know, whatever, or, you know, you gadgets and things that maybe you've, you, um, have been looking for and couldn't find in the big mess of your drawers or your garage or whatever it is you cleaned up. But once you finish it up, it's done and you can find things so much easier and you're just going to feel so much more relaxed and less anxiety when you're getting ready and looking for stuff. 
And then also, once you're finished with this, and remember what I said about just doing a little bit at a time, that really helped me because I used to do the thing um, because no matter what you're doing, it might just, I, I was focusing on clothes this time, but it might not be clothes. Maybe you're just cleaning under your bed, um, your kid's bed, because it was like stuff to the gills with stuff or something like that. Or a closet, a clo- kids' closets especially can get bad. So, you know, maybe you're dealing with that or something. But whenever you're done, just make sure that you're putting things back where they go because that's the very hardest part. With me, the hardest part after you declutter a room is every time you're doing that laundry, it's so much easier to just shove things in drawers. But if you maintain, if you put things where they go every time you've after you've decluttered something, if you're putting the pants where the pants should go, the shirts where the shirt should go, hanging up the dresses every single time, you're going to keep up with it and you're not going to have to keep doing these major time consuming, you know, just, just complete makeovers of your house. And I am very bad about this. This is where I struggle the most, you know, is just putting things in the right places, even in hard times, even if you're pressed for time, even if you're just, you know, having a bad day, you're feeling lazy, maybe you're feeling like you don't really want to clean correctly or just like whatever what's it gonna hurt if I just put you know one one pile of clothing into a drawer and not you know put it in the proper drawer or whatever but here's the thing if you do that you will keep doing that because you're like oh well I did it once I'll do it again you know keep doing it and keep doing it keep doing it and the next thing you know it's right back where it used to be and it's a big jumbled fat mess again so we have to try our best that's the hardest part part so tell yourself every time you do this I will put the clothes back in the places they're supposed to go. I will put the tools back in the places they're supposed to go. I will put the whatever it is you were organizing, utensils, pots, pans, you know, whatever. I will put them back where they're supposed to go because really you're just making more work for yourself if you don't. It's just making more work for yourself. It's just making your life harder and Nobody wants that because this is, oh, I'm trying to help you. And as irritating as it is, you know, when you're having a bad day and you'd rather just shove all those, you know, clothes in one drawer and just be like, I'm done. Okay, I'm done. No, 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 no. It does not work that way. So we're nearing the end of the episode. I didn't expect you guys to finish during this time. I'm just telling you how I do it and some tips for doing it. And hopefully after this episode you will get started and you will, I hope you already got started. I hope that this sparked some ideas in your head. I hope you were thinking of very specific areas if you didn't already start. I hope you're thinking, you know, this spot, this hot spot, this hot spot needs to be taken care of. And I hope whenever you get the time, and and trust me, sometimes saying that is scary because we don't always have time. So you have to make time. So um, just make time, say, I'm going to do this this day. And if it doesn't work out, then on that day, be like, okay, it didn't work out. But for sure, this next day, I'm going to do it. And the most important thing is keep up with it. Uh, I can't stress that enough. But I'm so proud of you guys for doing this. I'm so proud of you guys for taking the first step and just listening to this and getting ideas in your head and making a plan. Make a plan. Make a schedule. Figure out when you're going to do this. Do it right now. Right this second. If uh, you at all possibly can. And 
you guys just get tackle those hot spots and maintain those hot spots and let's just set out to be the best the best at maintaining our houses and maintaining those hot spots that are too because like you know how I mentioned my kitchen all the time um, the hot spots in my kitchen it's because you know I'm not main I'm not maintaining them I tackle them and then I don't maintain them I it's something I'm working on as well let's work on it together let's do it together let's keep these hot spots clean together let's tackle them let's do it I'm so happy and I'm proud of you guys thank you so much for listening and remember my Facebook page is clean with me podcast and my instagram page is at clean with me podcast all lowercase and then my art page if you guys are interested in getting some custom art or just looking and seeing what i have to offer i do all custom paintings um you tell me what you want and i will tell you that it's in the realm of my abilities And that would be at Jessica's Custom Work, all lowercase, on Facebook and Instagram, at Jessica's Custom Work, all lowercase, on Facebook and Instagram. Thank you all so, so much, and I'm so proud of you. Happy cleaning!